Hello, my name is Bo Wen Wang and my partner's name is Xing'an Sun. We are here to present our Computer Science 4303 StarCraft project focusing on the, on the extended Zerglin rush into a hydroless transition. The reason we picked this project is mostly influenced by me. As a kid, I've been quite fascinated with the RTS world as it was really amazing to see players be into multitask and micromanage units at such a high level. And I thought programming a buffer would be funny. Fairly interested in RTS games, and I played an extensive amount of StarCraft 2, which is another big influence on why this project is important to me. One of the first challenges we have was deciding between which race to develop our basic StarCraft bot. Should we focus on a more sophisticated siege tank push, a basic Zella rush, or a Zergen rush, or a Zergen rush with a twist? We ended up focusing our attention on the Zergen rush as, is, as it is because I'm a bigger fan of Zerg players. Between my partner and I, we worked close together, starting with basic 4-pool build, implementing attack logic, intelligent logic on sending units, and eventually expanding our rush to a double hatchery zergon rush, and finally transitioning to a hydroless push that we will be demonstrating later. This is part 2 of our presentation, focusing on problem, problem description. So what is the problem? We are coding a StarCraft bot task to win the built-in AI of StarCraft some of the times, with an emphasis on an in-depth implementation of a specific StarCraft unit type or AI feature. In our case, we focus our early game on a Zerglin rush and towards the mid-game we transition to a Hydroless push. The immediate problem is implementing a proper build order and having a well-implemented attack order to increase our chance of winning. In most games, the biggest issue with Zerglin rush is that it does not always win the game and it shouldn't win the game. Zerglin rush is used to harass the enemy's economy, thus giving us an advantage. In this project, our main focus is to attempt to win early with an extremely aggressive Zergling build that generally dissects the enemy before they build their economy. In most games where the AIs focus on expand the economy, we win 100% of the times. However, in some games where the AI is focusing on an early game oriented build, the one that gave us the most trouble is the Zealot Rush, our win condition becomes much more difficult. A list of sub-problems we have to solve is first implementing a proper build order that can harass the enemy out of resources at a very early stage in the game. This is quickly proven to be a challenge as we first need to figure out how Brew War API worked with the game. Once we had a basic understanding of the API, we next spent a great portion of time interacting with different build orders and concluding with results that gave us the largest success with the early game attack. Once we have a generalized build order, we slowly fit in a balance between Zergen Rush and Econ into a Hydroless push. Next, once we have successfully created a batch of Zerglings, we send them to the starting location of the enemy and along the way, as we detect enemies in our vision, we will then have them to implement an attack logic that gives us a better chance of harassing or ending the game. We will talk more about the attack logic in the next section. And once we have an attack logic, the more tedious problem is finding the perfect balance between how, many, how much Zerglings to send versus how much uh, how fast do we use Hydras to push and using Hydras uh, over Zergans altogether. Ideally, depending on what we scout to be the enemy race, our build order changes, but this problem is the last priority for us as we believe this just increased the win rate, but the implementation time will be much longer. Next, we have part three, the methodology of our project. We use a specific build order provided by StarCraft 1 Zerg Rush Guide with changes to the build order in respect to our project needs, and then using the results from our battle versus the AI, we adjust the timing at which we started to create our hydroless transition to give us more fighting power when we transition to the mid-game. The method we use to keep track of enemy units and attack priorities is based on a counter for enemy workers, enemy buildings, and enemy units. Our main logic with attacking is implemented in a method called Go Attack. I will talk about this method a little more in depth in a moment. First, we will talk about the build order. We choose to use the build order provided by this uh, strategy wiki on StarCraft. Um, we had a mixture in bet between using the 4-pool rush and the 7-pool rush. We took some parts of 4-pool and put some parts of 7-pool. The part we took from the 4-pool is we made a second hatchery. The part of the 7-pool that we use is instead of going for it, an extremely aggressive 4-pool, just 4 drone, uh, four drones at the beginning and straight into a spawning pool, we went for the 7-pool start. The reason for this strategy change is that we believe this is the best for our problem as it is uh, an easier way for us to devastate the computer AI 
uh, the computer AI's economy, thus giving us time to develop our economy and transition to hydroless. We also modified the strategy by making a second hatchery in the base to supply certain, uh, additional larvae to build zerglings at a much more aggressive rate and harassing the enemy at a more consistent rate. So that's very similar to the, four, to the severed four pool rush here where we made a second hatchery. It's for the same purpose. We've, all, we've also had an issue where our zerglings are sent into the enemy the moment they are made, which is incorrect as the strength of zerglings, in our opinions, it, is one by numbers. So we implemented a logic where we group up a certain number of zerglings before we send another attack. As the game progresses further, we transition to a hydralist push if our zerglings do not win the game for us. For our attack method, it is shown in the following pseudocode. So we keep track of a counter that keeps track of all three categories of enemies. We have enemy workers, enemy units, and enemy buildings. We found out that the, we found that the best win rate is always killing the enemy units first, as those units has much higher retaliation consequences. And then we kill the workers because they they are what creates the enemy units. They are what creates the economy for the enemy. Thus, the most important one, of the more important things that we need to kill. The, and then once everything is dead, we focus into the buildings. This method of is attacking is best for our choice given the average skill level of our computer, of our uh, opponent AI, and also taking it into account of our uh, our zergling rush. So in this little pseudocode here, we have we basically just loop through all the zerglings, then we from every single zergling's point of view, we loop through every single enemy and we attack in uh, in the order of the combat units into workers and buildings. Once we uh, implement the uh, transition in between like the first block of code and the second block of code, there is a bit of transition logic that has been done in the uh, code base that has not been shown here. But once, but the, but the summary is basically once a certain amount of zerglings has been sent to attack, we start to make our extractor and hydralis then. We send our hydralis eight at a time, and then we use a very similar attack order. In this part, um, this is where we implemented our attack logic. It's, it's under the go attack uh, method function here. Obviously, there could be this could use a lot of more details in terms of optimizing our attack logic. Uh, maybe perhaps implementing some microplay into it into uh, the implementation. But this is what we came up with for the time being. So basically, we loop through all the enemy units, and then once we get their types, and if it's a worker type then we increment our, our in value of worker C by one. So this loop through every single zergling. So every single zergling has their own count of worker counts, building counts, uh, and then unit counts. And this is all generated through the logic. So uh, through the logic of parsing through our unit set of enemy units. One thing to keep in mind is that in this section here, we had a situation where we were going against a zerg AI and then when we parse through the units of the Zerg enemy Zerg AI, the larva and the Zerg eggs are considered a unit of their own, and we make sure we do not attack those units or count those units as a part of our unit count or as a part of our enemy unit to count uh, to assign to our close unit. The close unit for all three logics, so the close worker, close building, and close unit, is all calculated based off of the get distance and the uh, worker distance here, the building distance, and the unit distance are all uh, static values that we pre-assigned uh, at the very beginning of the iteration, and we reset them back to a very high value before we set them again once we found the proper unit for the unit that we are looking at. The actual attack command is given here. So basically, when, whenever we do have existing um, enemy units that are greater than zero, we will attack those. And we had a, there was another debugging issue that we had where the game will crash because we are referencing a null pointer. And this basically solved, the, solved it because there are situations where the unit gets out of fog of war and they don't exist anymore. And, and, that, and that deals with that. Um, now, our list of things that we try to uh, uh, that we tried for this code, such as implementing a different vector storage system to fix our attack logic. Um, uh, we tried a lot of things and none of them really worked, but basically in the, later on in the demonstration video, um, you'll see how the attack logic is performing and it's acting a little bit weird that we, and we don't really know what to do. 
uh, in our starter bot CPP in this other starter bot here. We uh, so this is a, a basic look at um, what our uh, starter bot's uh, vector system would have looked like um, if it worked. But the obviously the situation we had with this is that the vectors kept growing indefinitely. It kept updating and it uh, just made the game run slower and slower and there was a lot of issues with with this code here that needs to be fixed um, ideally in the future that concludes part three methodology of our presentation the next part we will be talking about our results and discussions In this part here, we will be discussing our result and discussion, and we'll finally get to see some of our uh, uh, StarCraft bot um, in action. So in this little clip here, we uh, I skipped to the part where we're already sending our six Zerglings to the enemy base, and you'll notice uh, the econ destruction work here. So I'm just going to pause it for just a quick second. So you'll notice that once the Zerg, so the Zergans arrived here before our Overlord arrived, okay? And this shows that um, currently in the vision of the Zerglings, we do not see any other enemy unit other than this building here. Thus, the Zerglings will proceed to attack this unit. Pardon the little bug here with how the uh, Zergans are moving. But then the moment, if you look at the minimap here, the Zerg, the Overlord has spotted a drone aka a zerg uh, zerg uh, worker the zerglings immediately switches their uh, logic to attack the closest switch target to the closest drone and then that will be the target that's going to be targeted by all the zerglings so you can see it's in action now so the closest unit does change depending on like uh, the mining benefactors now we're just straight up kicking all these drones as ass Yeah, and this is how you win with Zerglings in an early game rush. Now, obviously, there's a so there's a little bug here with the way. Uh, I'll just pause here real quick. There's a little. There's a, so this is one of the power problems that we had with the uh, attack logic bug. So once we actually finish clearing out everything, uh, we don't know why it is not targeting the buildings. But when there's only buildings in range, at the very beginning, it it did target the buildings. So uh, that's. A problem that we're we've been trying to fix for a while now so that is just one clip of the many in the second clip here we will be uh, i will be showing you guys a clip where our zergling units has one has finished uh, demolishing a protoss uh, ai by using just zergling rushes let's and let's just see the aftermath so you'll notice that um, when there, so uh, the, the mini map will change over to the bottom right in a moment. But in this in this video clip, you'll notice how these zerglings came up right away and focused on this on this building that was the closest to it right away because there was no units that that were alive. All of them were dead. They were cleared out by the first wave of the zerglings um, to the right side here. So our building logic um, is actually correct. Uh, when there's nothing that exists, but obviously when there's something that exists, after we finish killing uh, that particular live unit, it doesn't shift to uh, pylons or it doesn't shift to other um, buildings as it should. But in this clip here that I've extracted, uh, we, we, we were able to show you a clip of um, our uh, AI doing the thing that it should be, that it should be doing. So just speed this up a little bit. They're just gonna uh, tear down the base, and then our next set of zerglings are spawned. Oh, one thing I want to show here: you'll notice that we have four zerglings here. So this is what we uh, there was a there was a bit of implementation that we had to do for um, implementing only sending uh, zerglings at six at a time. Um, right now, there's only four, and none are sent. But then once we have two more zerglings, uh, they will be sent. But yeah. Um, this is now oh, yeah, this is now clearing the base, and we're done. GG, well played, noobs.
In this clip, we captured a scenario where our Zergen rush in the early game was not able to end the game. So we had our, so it came to the point where we got to the mid game and we got our Hydralis to come in for a push. So you notice right away, we do not, so uh, in, according to the looking at the mini map here, the bottom right side is Fog of War right now. So right now our Hydra is just issuing a move command to the starting position of the enemy base. And then it should switch targets depending on what we see in the moment. So now the moment we just see a Marine, we transition to the uh, Marine. Doing, uh, working as intended. So this is one of the logics that we actually uh, didn't end up implementing right away, uh, straight away. So you'll notice that our Hydralis, they are not attacking this bunker who is clearly attacking back. So this is one of the special buildings that we didn't implement due to time, time constraint, but essentially we needed to treat all Marine bunkers that are attacking as a combat unit and so like the priority system in our attack logic would make this bunker that I'm highlighting um, to be the top priority. But it's not being shown here as it wasn't actually uh, put into our code. But this part here is very, um, it, like it, sh it shouldn't be too bad to implement for future implementations. So just pardon, uh, the hydro is just straight up ignoring the bunker because they treat it as a building. But the rest of the code is doing as intended. The moment a marine gets made, the uh, hydra, the hydras on the right side where it detected it, they switch it from the SCV to the marine, and then going back to SCVs that are closest to them. Then, as we continue on the clip, we have more hydras incoming. So you notice the hydras are coming from right, uh, left side. Once again, part of them getting shot down, but uh, once the marine, marine is dead, they're killing all the SCVs again. And then eventually, we send enough Hydras and we complete Devastator Economy and just completely winning us the game at this point. Despite that bunker um, causing this shit. In this breast shoot we have shown, this is the results of running our game against the built-in AI bot 100 games. And all the results are uh, shown in the, uh, in the following table. All the red color means we've lost, all the green colors mean we, means we've won, all the yellow colors means we, we actually did win, so the enemy is incapable of creating another unit, but we ended up having buildings that we didn't uh, finish killing because of that, uh, because part of my, uh, part of our attack logic is off and is not focusing the buildings after all the units are dead. This comes down to a 38% full win rate, a 49% lose rate, and a 51% technically we won rate. Now, keep in mind that all the yellow, all the yellow blocks are fixed the moment we fix that building fixation block. Because all these need to do is that when there is nothing to attack, we are attacking all the buildings that are in vision, and we didn't seem to get that to work. So that's one fix that will instantly boost our win rate from 38 to 51 with one fix. Secondly, in a lot of games that we lost, most of the uh, most of the if, if not all of the Protoss games that we did lose, we lost to a Protoss uh, units where they are using a counter rush strategy where they use a lot where, where they build a lot of zealots. Um, in uh, in our findings of our like by slowing down the uh, uh, the the game, uh, we noticed that the Zerglings, they are not optimizing their pathing in terms of attacking the Zealots, and that's why we are having issues with actually trying to win against the Zealots, but this is fixed if we implement a more in-depth attack logic for the Zerglings um, to counteract this. And if we can fix the attack logic of the Zerglings, everything, every, all, most of the, if not all the red cells here will mostly turn green depending, uh, seeing how close it was with our current attack logic used against these AIs. So in summary, we implemented a Zergling rush with a mid-game transition to Hydralis if our Zerglings did not seal the deal in the early game. We went through many build orders, attempt, attempts to make a near-perfect attack uh, logic and plan for more strategies adapt, adaptations to improve our win rates and make our bot more intelligent. In, term of, in terms of success, 
Our 100 game data speaks for itself. We have a 38% win rate where we fully demolish every single structure of the enemy AI and bring us back to the victory screen. 30% of the games were technically won, but because we did not finish implementing the full attack logic, we were stuck in games where the opponent was incapable of creating more units and we will have a massive armage left at the enemy base not touching any of the buildings. So in my honest, humble opinion, I think we are 40 to 45% successful as there are still many things we can add to our attack logic. Or maybe even implementing a microing logic for our zerglings and having a separate kiting and uh, microing logic for our hydralisk. Given more time, the immediate improvement is done by making sure all structures are destroyed when all units are destroyed. When we fix the attack logic to maximize um, DPS from the units, and then we also get to implement a microing system where units will behave much more smart and potentially surpassing humans. Assuming the mentioned uh, tasks are implemented, I strongly believe our bot will have near 100% win rate given how close the fights were in some of the lost games. Final notes, thank you Dave for being our instructor and for providing us with such a well-structured course. I've enjoyed my time with you immensely and I've also learned a lot. Truly appreciate your efforts into putting together this course and sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much.